so this is the preview of our very simple responsive website that we are going to build together so let's jump into the action first of all i need you to install node.js in this course we are not going to use node.js we need to use npm which is the node package manager and in order to use that you have to have node.js installed on your system just go to node.js.org download it and install it once you do that open up the terminal and run this command npm i which is short for install dash g which is short for global and here is the package we are going to install create dash react dash app enter now the next thing you need is a code editor i am going to use in this course is visual studio code or vs code because it's a very lightweight and cross-platform editor so if you don't have it go to codevisualstudio.com download it and install it here is the vs code we are going to install on extension that make it easier to build reactions in the vs code so open up the extension panel on the left and search for es7 here is the extension i am talking let's install it now click on view tab and open up the terminal from here or you can press ctrl back t i'm going to change the directory cd desktop and let's type npx create dash react dash app blog dash website now press enter this will only take a moment happy hacking that means we are ready to go this is our folder we just created simply i am going to drag and drop this folder open up the terminal we can run our application by running npm start so this will launch our development server on port 3000 all right everything is working properly let's go back to vs code and see what we have in its folder so here we have three folders node modules which is where we have all the third party libraries as well as react itself we never have to touch this we have public folder and we have source folder i want to go into app.js and this is the root app component and everything you can see here is coming from this component now i am going to delete everything that's inside of this i am going to delete this class name also inside it for now let's say ready to go now save the changes back in the browser here is the text now back to our code i am going to go ahead and clean up some things that we are not going to be using just to make it a little bit easier so i am going to delete app.css now press ctrl and click on app.test.js logo.svg report web vitals.js setup test.js now i am going to delete them we also need to make some changes for example i am going to delete these lines let's go into our index.js we don't need this line and also this line now save the changes also let's go into our app.js and save the changes all right now i am going to create a component folder inside our source folder so components i will add a file called navbar.js this will be the file which we used to actually create our navbar make sure you install this extension now type rafce press enter and it will automatically generate a functional component with the name of the file navbar this is amazing because it reduces your development time and it just makes everything goes a lot faster now if i save it nothing's going to happen because we just created the navbar component we did not put it into our application so let's go into our app.js now i am going to import navbar so over here import navbar from dot slash component slash navbar let's get rid this one and let's type navbar self closing tag set the changes back in the browser now you can see the navbar text 
here is a preview of the finished product of what we are going to build together let's jump into the action so we just saw the finished product but now it's time to build it together so let's start from scratch let me look at the reference design and let's focus on this dark teal area up top first essentially it contains our logo text in the left corner and then a few navigation links in the right corner so let's write the html for that back to our code let's go into navbar.js i'm going to add a class name for this div equal to header inside it i will have a heading level one that says blog logo so let's type h1 and just say blog logo and below that i will have an order list with those few navigation links so ul for an order list inside it i will have each one be a list item now in html to create a link that you can click on to go to a new page you use the a element which stands for anchor and the ref value is where you would go if you actually click on the link we are not going to actually set up any separate pages so i am just going to have a placeholder hashtag value but then in between the opening and closing a tags that's where you include the actual text that you can click on so let's say home and then i am just going to copy and paste that line for two other links so they were about and blog now save the changes back in the browser so we see that we have the raw content now let's start worrying about the actual design so for example we noticed that the top header area should have a teal background color or in the other words we don't just want the entire page to be teal we just want that top section with both the logo text and the links to be till okay let me show you what i need let's target this header class let's go into our index.css i'm going to delete everything now we just want to target that class of header so to target a class you begin with a dot and then the matching name so dot header curly bracket let's say background color let's say hash 008080 now save the changes if we take a look at the preview notice the entire page is not the till but just short of this area that has both our logo and the navigation links now we are trying to make this content look like this so first let's make both our logo and navigation links white so we can actually read them against this teal background so within our css within this header rule we can just add a new line and say color colon white or you can just say hashtag fff now save the changes so that changed the color of our header and the bullets but the actual links are still blue to change the color of a link you need to target them specifically instead of targeting their parent okay let me show you what i mean let's go into our navbar.js go ahead and give our unordered list a class name equal to nav now save the changes let's go into our index.css let's create a new rule and say dot nav space and then a curly bracket in here we are just saying that we want to select any a elements that live inside an elements with a class name of nav now inside this rule we can just say color colon hash fff now set the changes next we don't want the links to be underlined you can just say text decoration none okay next let's remove the bullet icon so to do that i'm going to create a new rule say dot nav curly bracket that's our overall unordered list element and then just say list style none save the changes if we look at the reference design 
to see it on the same line as our logo element. So how can we make that happen? Well remember we created a div with a class name of header and both of those two elements live within that div. So check this out. Let's add a new declaration and let's say display flex. Now save it. This is what we wanted the header and list are now sitting side by side. So essentially when you tell a parent element to use display flex it's going to try to align all of its direct children elements to be on a single line. Now that is what we want write them on a single line but we don't want the navigation link to be right up against the header. Instead we want the navigation link to sit on the right side. So check this out on our parent element here after display flex we can just say justify content space between now save it okay next we don't want the navigation links to sit one by one instead we want those to sit side by side as well so check this out in our css we already have a rule where we targeting the navigation evil so within that rule we can just say display flex save it next notice that the header appears to be centered but the links are up in the top center so let's fix that within our header let's say align items center and also flex wrap wrap now save the changes next i want to get rid of this awkward white border we see around the content so to fix that let's create a new rule where we target the overall body element so body curly bracket let's say margin zero save the changes great now we want to add a bit of horizontal padding so within our header let's say padding 0 45 pixel when you provide just two values the first is used for the vertical top and bottom and this is used for the horizontal values okay next why don't we add a bit of horizontal spacing in between the different nav links inside our css file i would create a new rule called dot nav space li curly bracket and then let's say padding 10 pixel now save the changes now it's looking great okay next let's use a custom font instead of this browser default times new roman you can visit fonts.google.com and let's search for poppins here it is so i'm just going to click on that and i will choose regular then i will choose medium and bold let's select import and i'm going to copy this url and let's paste it over here again let's copy this font family and paste it within our body now save the changes now i think that looks a lot better next let's add a hover effect for when you mouse over one of these navigation links so we already have a rule dot nav space a and below that let's make a new rule nav space a colon hover and let's say color colon hashtag e5 f2 f2 now set the changes let's test this out perfect i think that looks nice at this point our till header area is complete okay let's look at the reference design and now let's start working on this area notice that it use a light till background color so what i am getting at is we are going to want a div element to store this headline paragraph and this button link right and that way the overall div element can have this light till background color let me show you what i have in mind first of all i am going to create a file inside our component folder let's create a hero.js file and type rafce press enter save the changes let's go into our app.js i'm going to import this hero component so import hero from dot component slash hero below that navbar 
I'm going to add hero component over here. Now save the changes back in the browser. You can see hero text. Let's go into our hero.js. I'm going to add a class name equal to hero. Inside that div, I'm going to have one more div and that div is going to have a class name equal to hero dash inner. Okay, now inside the div, let's have a heading level one. So h1 and say welcome to our blog. Below that, let's have a paragraph i'm going to copy this paragraph and paste it over here below that paragraph let's have a link so let's type a tag and for the ref value let's just say hashtag and inside the opening and closing a tags let's say learn more now save the changes okay let's take a look at the preview so there is the raw content now it's our job to turn this into this so let's start with the teal background color. Let's write a new bit of CSS. So down at the bottom of my CSS, I will create a brand new rule and target. So dot hero curly bracket background color hashtag e5f2f2 set the changes you can see the background color okay let's give this div a bit of vertical and horizontal padding so padding 60 pixel on top and bottom and 25 pixel on left and right set the changes perfect below that let's create a new rule hero dash inner curly bracket and this is where we can say width let's go with 760 pixel now save the changes however if you remember in the reference design this content here should be horizontally centered within its parent container well to achieve that we can add display flex and justify content center now save the changes that gives us exactly what we want okay moving forward let's begin styling this actual text content here let's start with the heading so i will just add a new rule down at the very bottom so i will begin by selecting our hero div and then h1 curly bracket let's say font weight normal font size 4 n and finally margin 0 save the changes let's focus on this paragraph so i am going to create another rule hero space p curly bracket let's say font size 1.18 m and line height 1.6 now save the changes nice so you can see there is a bit more spacing between each line okay next let's focus on the learn more link so let's go into our hero.js and give it a class name of button now save the changes let's go into our index.css let's create a brand new rule and target dot button curly bracket okay instead of the text being blue let's make it white so color hashtag fff set the changes let's remove the underline of the text so text decoration none let's give it a background color hashtag 008080 let's give it a bit of padding 12 pixel on top and bottom and 20 pixel on left and right you can say font size 1.18 ram border radius 8 pixel and finally display inline block now save the changes that's looking better okay at this point we have completed this light till area let's look at the reference design now we can focus on this area so right away i noticed that it does not use any background color essentially it contains an image in the left side and the content in the right side so what i am getting at is we are going to want a div element to store the image and the content okay let me show you what i mean 
So let's write the HTML for that. First, let's create a file inside our component. So I'm going to name it about us.js. Now type RAFCE and press enter. Save the changes. Let's go into our app.js. I'm going to import about us component. So import about us from dot component slash about us. Let's add the component over here about us. Save the changes back in the browser. You can see about us text. Let's go into our about us.js file. Let's give it a class name equal to about us. Inside it, I'm going to add one more div and that div is going to have a class name equal to about underscore ing. This div is for image. Below that div, I'm going to add one more div and that div is going to have a class name equal to about us underscore content and this div is for content. Before we create an image tag, let's create an assets folder inside our source folder. Assets, I already added our image inside our assets folder. So let's import this image inside our about us component. So import about img from dot dot slash assets slash about us dot jpg now save the changes let's have a image tag over here self closing tag and that image tag is going to have a source equal to about img and a alt equal to about us now save the changes you can see the image let's focus on our content Okay, now inside of this div, let's have a heading level 1. So, h1 and say about us. Below that, let's have a heading level 2. So, h2 and let's say what we believe in. And below that, let's have a paragraph. I'm going to copy this paragraph and paste it over here. Below that paragraph, Again, I'm going to add on more paragraph. I'm going to copy this paragraph and paste it over here. Finally, we have the link. Let's go into our hero.js file. I'm going to copy this a tag. And below that p tag, I'm going to paste over here. Now save the changes. Let's take a look at the preview. So there is the raw content. Now it's our job to turn this into this. Here you can see the width of this area and the width of this area are same. So what we can do, we can add an extra class name container. Now save the changes. Let's go into our index.css. Let's target that container curly brackets so give it a maximum width so max width equal to 1200 pixel margin 0 auto and finally padding 60 pixel on top and bottom and 25 pixel on left and right now save the changes now let's worry about having them sit side by side so i'm going to create a new rule dot about us display flex gap 45 pixel now save the changes great let's fix the image width and the content so let's type about us underscore img curly bracket flex 1 below that let's type about us underscore content flex colon 1 and below that rule i'm going to add on more rule about us underscore image then space image with 100 percent now save the changes let's go into our about us.js file 
and let's change it about us underscore image now save the changes back in the browser let's focus on this content area so below that i'm going to create a new rule let's type dot about us space h1 curly bracket color hash 088080 font size 3.5 rem font weight normal and finally margin 0 now save the changes now let's focus on this text so let's create a new rule dot about us space h2 font size 1.5 rem font weight normal and finally margin 0 save the changes great let's focus on this paragraph so let's add a new rule dot dot about us underscore content space p curly brackets margin 0 padding 15 pixel on top and bottom and 0 pixel on left and right line height 1.6 let's say color hashtag 333 and finally font size 14 pixel now save the changes now it's looking great let's look at the small devices like mobile or tablet so let's right click and go to inspect and let's click on toggle device toolbar over here now you can see we are on mobile device so let's check this out and here on our mobile device is not looking good so let's fix this to fix this we can add media query so let's check this out let's say media space screen and max dash with colon 980 pixel curly bracket dot about us curly bracket flex dash direction column now save the changes now it's looking great okay at this point we have completed our about us section so let's look at the reference design at this point let's start working on this area you can see that it used light teal background color also you notice that we don't want to the content to be spread out across the full width instead we want to center it in this middle maybe 1200 pixels at the max but we do want the full width of this area to have that light teal background color so let's get started back to our code i am going to create a file inside our components folder let's name it blog.js now type rafce press enter now save the changes let's go into our app.js file let's import our block component so import blog from dot slash components slash block let's add block component over here now save the changes back in the browser you can see block text back to our code let's go into our blog.js file let's give it a class name equal to blog you could name it anything and then inside it let's have another div and this div is going to have a class name equal to container space blog dash inner okay now inside that div let's start adding multiple blocks so if we look at the reference design I'm just considering each one of these a blog. So each one is just a div that has both a heading and then a paragraph. So back to our code, let's correct this name inner. Inside of it, I'm going to add on more div and that div is going to have a class name equal to blog dash item. Then inside it, let's have a heading level 3 so h3 and say blog hashtag 1 and then below that let's have a paragraph and i'm going to copy this paragraph and paste it over here let's just copy and paste or duplicate this blog item div because if we look at the reference design we want nine of them right so i'm just copy this div 
and below that i am going to paste it and we can change the number here let's paste again and one more let's change the number three and four over here now save the changes so now if we look at our preview area here is that raw content so let's add the light till background color back to our code let's go into our index.css file so at the very bottom of my css code i will create a brand new rule and say dot blog curly brackets and let's say background color hash e5 f2 f2 now save the changes now you can see light till background color okay next now let's focus on that inner div i'm going to add a new rule let's say blog dash in our curly bracket let's look at the reference design and let's run how to set up short of these three column layout that we see in the reference design now to achieve this three column layout we absolutely could use flexbox if we wanted to however i think there is an even better tool for the job and it's something in css called grid so check this out back in our code let's add a new declaration that says display grid and also let's say grid dash template dash columns 300 pixel space 200 pixel now save the changes back in the browser we'll take a look at what's going on so essentially our first item is taking up 300 pixels of width and then our second item is taking up 200 pixels of width now in our grid template code here for columns we only listed two values and then our third and fourth items they just start over so the third item takes up the 300 pixels and then this one takes up to 200 pixels now what if we said 33 percent space 33 percent space 33 percent now save the changes then the fourth item since we only listed three columns here however that does not leave any space for margin in between each column right because we are already taking up 99 percent of the width so for example if we add another declaration grid dash column dash gap semicolon 45 pixel now save it well that does indeed give us a 45 pixel gap in between each column but notice that we have the horizontal scroll bar it's because our columns alone were already taking up 99 percent of the available width and then we tried to add in this 45 pixels gap and two instance of that so that's 45 plus 45 that's 90 pixel so we just went over our budget so that's why we created this horizontal scrolling situation which we want to avoid at all cost so let's get it 33 percent 33 percent 33 percent and let's type repeat auto dash fit comma min max parenthesis 300 pixel comma on fr now save the changes back in the browser okay there you can see that taking effect let's look at the mobile device also on mobile device it is looking great now if we want to control the spacing in between rows just like grid column gap we can add a declaration named grid row gap let's check this out so over here grid dash column dash gap 45 pixel save the changes now let's go ahead and finish up the text styling for these columns so below that i am going to add a new rule let's type blog dash in our h3 curly brackets color hashtag 008080 let's say font size 1.5 rem let's say font weight normal and finally margin 0 now save the changes next let's focus on this paragraph so below that i am going to add a new rule let's type dot blog dash inner p curly brackets let's say margin 0 line height 1.6 and finally color hashtag 333 save the changes perfect you can see we are not getting row gap 
so let's check this out in here let's change row now save the changes now we are getting row gap now you might remember that in the reference design there were nine blocks instead of just four so now i am going to add them so let's go into our block.js now i am going to copy this div and paste it over here for nine block and let's change block 5 and then block 6 block 7 block 8 and finally block 9 now save the changes now we have the 9 block okay at this point we have completed this block area so now let's focus on our footer I'm going to create a new file inside our components folder let's say footer.js and now type rafc press enter save the changes let's go into our app.js file let's import footer from dot slash components slash footer let's add footer component over here so footer self closing tag save the changes now you can see the footer text back to our code let's go into our footer.js i'm going to add a class name equal to footer inside it i'm going to add a p tag and let's say ampersand copy semicolon and then 2022 block company now save the changes so there we see it down in the preview now let's style it a bit so in the css i will just create a new rule dot footer curly brackets and let's say text align center padding 20 pixel on top and bottom and zero on left and right color hashtag 999 and finally font size 12 pixel now save the changes at this point we successfully recreated our reference design if you like this video please like comment and subscribe for the next video